The first thing I'll say is to put away your time clock. So nothing about the surfacing of a book-length vision will cooperate with what you impose upon it externally. So just like a child coming into this world, a book will do so on its own when it is good and ready. So it can be very frustrating to us, uh, but I really do think that the, the baby analogy is, is an apt one. So, and this doesn't mean that you don't explore, question, nudge, pencil in page counts, ideal page counts on your calendar of, of what you want to get to. Just be extremely willing to move them. And I carried the what if scenario that prompted my forthcoming novel around for seven years before it was ready to take shape on the page. And I was pretty astounded the other day when I um, sat there and actually had to count when I'd first gotten the idea for this novel and how long it had germinated. And then when it did actually come out onto the page, it showed up as a short story. And it was a short story that was pretty unwieldy. It was long. It was like 30, 35 pages. And the author I was working with at, with at the time had said, you know, you might want to think about this um, as a novel. You have to have enough interest in it, though. And there has to be enough, uh, enough uh, propulsion in the conflict. There's got to be enough there to carry it through for hundreds of pages. So that's something to think about, too, just when, you, when you're kind of dancing around what you think might be the idea for, for a book. So then I set it aside for another three years after I wrote the short story, because I just, I just wasn't ready. So that's 30 pages in 10 years. <laughs> that was my progress in initially getting this novel off the ground. And if that sounds inconceivable, ask Donna Tart. She's the author of The Goldfinch and The Secret History and several other very fat novels. And she takes, you know, decades, if not more, to write, to write a book. And, and I'll add that writing to discover is fine for, I think, about the first 30 to 50 pages, maybe up to 75 pages or so. And that's just where you're, you know, you're writing. You don't know where anything's going. Um, you're just letting whatever it is come onto the page. But pretty quickly, you want to figure out the container. And I've heard a number of writers call the structure the container. And I really like that because it's more than just structure. It, it's including all the parts therein. So your point of view, the tense, the time span, the major plot points and settings. So you don't want to just be writing hundreds and hundreds of pages. And also remember, that an unconventional structure is still a structure that you've got to figure out. So if you're going to attempt something, something like David Mitchell's Cloud Atlas, which is a book written uh, like somewhat like, a, I guess, like a, what you'd call a Russian nesting doll, where that there's layers that come to a center, um, that's an unconventional structure. He still needed to figure that out. Um, and I, I'm guessing he figured that out relatively early on um, based on how that book, that book is written. The setting has got to matter. It's got to feed the conflict. And in writing these early pages, you want to focus on keeping the story moving forward, resisting the urge to slip into backstory. Um, I just recently, uh, in the last month, judged the um, state grant for the Florida Literary Arts division. And one of the big uh, challenges, I guess, in many of the manuscripts that were very good, but they just weren't, they didn't make it to that next stage, whether it was, and this applies whether it's for an award or whether it would be a publisher or an editor looking at it. Um, the narratives were, it, there was too much exposition about the characters and just what their jobs were and um, not really getting to the heart of the matter. Again, why is this day important and pushing the story forward? So it really, it really separated um, the work that, that was doing that um, from that which wasn't, wasn't quite as tight.